Welcome to the Beauty Inspires Beauty Podcast, where I've made it my mission to help beauty professionals, creative and independent entrepreneurs like you find the tools, inspiration, and motivation to unlock the abundant life you know you are meant to be living. Each week, you can expect epic guests and solo episodes sharing every tool, trick, and skill set I've learned on my own 20-year journey to grow and scale your life and business. I'm your host, Jessica Bergio, former salon owner turned beauty business mentor and crazy multi-passionate entrepreneur, here to share incredible stories and insight about how others got started and the unconventional path they took to get there. My goal is to inspire you to reach your business and life goals with confidence to achieve your dream life through creating non-negotiables and boundaries without sacrificing your personal well-being and relationships. I know firsthand how real burnout can be. So if you're ready to stop the overwhelm and get clear and focused, you're in the right place, babe. Let's jump right in. Welcome back to the Beauty Inspires Beauty Podcast. I am your host, Jessica Bergio. I'm super excited today for this guest because I'm not going to lie. You know what? We don't know what we don't know. And Virginia is here today to tell us all the things we don't know. And it could change tomorrow, but she's going to stay in, in, in the loop with me. And we're going to go through some things that um, I need to learn. So therefore, I know you guys need to hear and learn. Virginia has a company called The Content Lounge. She is a copywriter and business coach that has so that doesn't even encompass all the things she does. So Virginia, welcome to the show. Can you tell everybody who you are and what you do for people like me trying to figure out our way um, in the world of social media? Thank you so much for this lovely introduction and thanks for having me. Yes, so I am a copywriter and business coach and I really fell into this niche after... <laughs> Um, I started a women's activewear brand. I had two degrees in business. I was a digital native. I had a degree in fashion design. I thought this was going to be the easiest thing possible. I even wrote my bachelor thesis about social media and the fashion industry. So I thought this was going to be a home run. And uh, I produced women's activewear. The product was really amazing. And I was raised on the belief that you just have to work really, really hard and then success will find you. And I was like, sure, I'm going to figure this out. And I was working so hard. I grew my Instagram to 25,000 followers and nobody bought a, bought a single thing. I learned how to do Pinterest, how to do Facebook marketing, how to do SEO. I had a website. I had a blog. I was doing all the things. And I mean, I was just working so hard and results were not coming in. And I was asking myself, what, how is this possible? Why can other women who used to work, I was living in Silicon Valley at the time, who used to work at Google and Facebook and Pinterest, they could just drop out of these companies and start a clothing brand and pretty much sell out. How is that possible? And to give you a rundown how much I was working, I was working easily 18, 19 hour days. Like there were days if this factory in, in LA needed me, I would hop and get up at 4 a.m., hop in my car, drive to LA, work nine to five in LA and drive right back. So <laughs> in the same day. So I was working really, really hard and I could not make any sales possibly. And I was hopping from program to program to program. Nothing was working until one day a friend of mine who was a business coach looked at my content on social media and was like, wow, your photos are really pretty, but you know, you never give your audience a reason to buy ever. Your content's crap. <laughs> it's useless for selling. Can we say thank you to that friend or was that like a slap yeah. in the face to all the hard work you'd been doing? At that time, I was looking at $100,000 in debt. My living room was full of merchandise and I was just so burned out. I was like, I didn't even know what to do anymore, to be honest. So at that point in time, I was like, well, thanks for throwing me a bone. It's another thing I can try to fix. So he told me, yeah, you should really learn how to write proper copy. I mean, hashtag vibes just doesn't cut it. Like, why would you, why would you post that? Um, can you tell me more about your products? I was telling him all amazing things. And I was like, so excited. And all that excitement transpired for me. He was like, yeah, see, that is what's missing on your social media. Your photography is gorgeous. But like, why should I care? 
What's the reason? Why do I need this? Why should I not just go buy Lululemon instead? And the moment I started learning about copywriting, the results were so instantaneous. It just was mind blowing. So I took one program about copywriting and read one book about copywriting and then just started to be really, really mindful how Silicon Valley dropouts talk about their products. I watched countless Kickstarter campaigns. Anyways, I I self-taught myself copywriting with books and other stuff. Took three months of stopping everything. And within 90 days, I sold out every single unit I had ever produced and could not sell for three years. (laughs) Oh my gosh. What a, that's incredible. Okay. So you're speaking to the ramble queen, right? I, I can write a post. Um, I can, I, I one day will write a book because the book, what I write should be in a book. It's not copy. And that's something I recently realized through researching people like you and, and looking at what my counterparts are doing in the industry, right? Like how are other business coaches selling out programs are doing X, Y, Z, hundred K, all the things, right? Yeah. I was like, what's the difference? Because my shit's just as good. I have just as much to offer. I took the same course as you, like we're teaching similar (laughs) stuff. What is the difference? And, um, can you explain the difference between writing a cute post underneath, even an inspiring or motivating post versus copy that will convert to either getting clients or getting sales? Yeah, 100%. So (laughs) this is probably one of the most common questions I get asked. And this is really the bitter truth that I had to learn myself um, back then. Anyways, I was, you asked, okay, you asked so many questions. Um, So what's the difference between those coaches that easily sell out, even though they just took one or two business courses, Jesus, can't talk. That's why I'm a writer. Um, <laughs> and those people that take the same programs and it's just not selling that, that well. So I find that maybe 1% of the coaches that are super, super, super successful, that 1%, there are a few coaches who have a natural knack for imitating copy from copywriters, for learning by doing. And their ability to clearly and effectively communicate in a way that works like a copywriter is just, they're just extremely lucky and gifted with that. Everybody else has only two options or three options. Either you spend an insane amount of money on a copywriter because copywriting is one of the most expensive services you could you could hire for a website can cost anywhere between three and 10k easily um or you invest in learning at least the basics of copywriting and there you either pay someone to teach you someone who knows what they're doing or you buy a ton of books and just tr- hope that you fall into the category of people who can emulate really, really quickly, or you choose not to learn it. And then everything will be more difficult because communication is the basis for getting other people excited about anything. Think about it. If you want to talk to your significant other, you want to try to convince them to go watch a movie with you. What do you do? You communicating with them. You talk to them while you're excited about that. Well, when you're talking to someone through a computer screen and a written post or even on Instagram stories, you don't have nonverbal communication the way you do in real life. You, you can't just read their facial expressions to see whether they actually got it or whether you might need to clarify. And a lot of the writing, even if it's technically good, fun, entertaining, motivational kind of writing, It's not specific enough. It's not clear enough. It doesn't get across effectively when there's two computer screens in between or two phone screens, right? Yours and theirs. So a lot of the times the problem is unclear communication. And when when people join my programs and I'm like, can you tell me what you do? And they need 15 minutes to try to explain to me and I still haven't quite got it impossible. These businesses will not be successful until they have actually clarified their message and they learn how to verbalize what they're doing. So that's, I think, the, the, the reason why some coaches, their business just takes off like, like rocket ship and other, other businesses don't. Now, what makes a really good effective copy versus a really good fun to read post? 
Um, that is something that influencers have to have don't have to worry about, right? If you're an influencer, you just need to be entertaining or fun or motivational or inspiring. If you're a coach or someone who wants to sell something, that isn't good enough. You, giving value or educating isn't good enough. What you need to focus on is whether your post can create desire for your offer and trust that you're not a scam, that people actually are safe if they choose to pursue a life-changing transformation with you, or I mean, even a haircut can be life-changing transformation, right? We wanna see photos because we wanna be safe. Same thing, if you do anything that isn't as visual as a haircut or styling or makeup, but that is deeper or non-visual, how do you give people faith that you actually hold space for them and help them succeed, right? We, we're all scared of failure. And then whether you can move them to action. That, those are the three things. Can you create desire, trust, and action with your words? Desire, trust, and action. I love that. Yes, because I think the desire can be easy. People want to stay around your energy. And like you said, motivation doesn't really get people to purchase. Um, mm -hmm. But feeling safe, like you, they can be seen by you and that you have something that they need. Um, we hear a lot of like keywords, like find their pain point and um, clearly communicate how you can help them with that. How can you solve that problem? And so that gets people into niching down and um, their ideal clients and exactly like one thing. And I think for someone like me, when I got into coaching business professionals or, or beauty professionals, I was like, well, I've been at square one and I've put 20 years in the industry. I was like, who do I want to work with? I can help myself because here I am 20 years in, I can help my current five year ago self, but I can also help the early stage person coming into the industry. Um, and so that was something like I had, I had a lot of struggle. I was like, who do I want? I could help everybody, but we know we have to clearly communicate to one person. So if my messaging is for the, the old school stylist who didn't use social media to build, it's not going to be the same copy that's going to go to the millennial or the brand new 19 year old there it, you can't speak to the same person you can't speak the same language to two different people so yeah I think for me that's where I struggled going back and forth as to like what did I even want to be saying and who did I want to be helping um and that's like what I see a lot in my coaching business with um any of these business entre beauty entrepreneurs is they haven't clearly defined like their ideal client so when they're posting on social media they're kind of just taking random pretty pictures and throwing them up there and so if they're lucky, it hits, somebody sees it. And I've always just encouraged regardless, post that because at least it's your, it's your almost sales page, if you will, for someone who doesn't maybe have a website, someone's going to look you up on Instagram if they were referred to you, even if it wasn't through the social media. But for those of, those of them that want to show up and create more of a brand and a business on social media, what are some of the rules that we need to be following right now as far as like, how many times do we have to post? How long should, should our content captions be? Um, and then the importance of the hashtags. And I also want to know, how many reels do I have to do a week? Okay, so here is the honest, harsh truth. None if you don't want to. You don't. It's your business, your rules. Um, I built a six-figure coaching business from scratch in the first year with a newborn baby on my on my lap and I only post it once a week. I mean, I don't I didn't post more because I didn't I didn't have time for more. And I still had a six-figure business. So if you can clearly communicate, you don't need a lot. You don't need to put in hours. And this is why I told you my story in the beginning because we tend to do so much and we keep filling our plates with so much crap that is of course, it can help if you do it right, but most of the time, we're not. If you focus on the basics, learning how to clearly and effectively communicate, being very concise in just who you want to work with and then who you want to talk to, and, and then you don't have to do a lot. Now, if you do want to do reels, I mean, there are weeks where I do reels and then there are weeks where I don't do reels. I typically do reels when I am specifically looking to get more eyeballs on a certain piece of content that I posted just before that. That's the only time I will do reels because I know, or something that I want to draw attention to. So right now I'm doing a seven day Instagram story prompt challenge, which is like how to sell with Instagram stories beyond 
talk to the pain point um, or like talk about the vision. So like these are like very generic prompts that you can Google, but how do you actually sell? And I, it, for this challenge, I wanted more people to know about it. So I did one or two reels simply to get more people looking at my stories and like actually knowing about this and signing up to my email list. So I'm very specific. I'll do a reel in the middle of a launch simply to bring back people who have already been following me and like make them aware that something's going on so that they'll maybe watch my reel and then hop over to my stories. That's all I need reels for. Um, other than that, I don't think that there are any reels of like, you must post this many times or that many times. I do think doing Instagram stories every day um, is very helpful because it's kind of like that red flashy open sign on your favorite deli at the corner, right? You want to know that people are open for business, that they are actively using their account. So if you your last post is two weeks ago, that's fine. If, if people see that you are on stories every day, they know you're still open for business. Now, you said something about like people are throwing up um, photos of like, I don't know, pretty pictures here and there, maybe, I don't know, some latte art. Now, I'm not against filler pictures in between of like communicating a lifestyle. I did that on my fashion Instagram account as well, um, which was active wear. And then in between I'd have, I don't know, a smoothie bowl or latte art or flowers or something. Now for my business, I um, my coaching business and my copywriting business, I don't actually use these kinds of filler pictures. I focus on what I'm selling. Now for me, I'm selling my skills. So all the photos are either off me or they're infographics about my, my area of expertise, right? Now, if you work in the beauty industry, beauty is like very visual. I would focus as much as possible on before and after photos, photos of your work, photos of your clients. A lot of the times they're really proud to be featured. So they'll even repost you and tag you. That gives you some added traffic. If you can do a reel where, you know, these before and after reels where you maybe snip into the camera and then suddenly the room is clean. Why don't you do something like that with a haircut? right? You have the first, the pretty haircut, you hold your hand up, you snip, and boom, it's the beautiful new haircut with the balayage and all the bells and whistles, right? Why don't you focus on reels like that, that explicitly create desire? Because you see before the hair is not pretty, after the hair is pretty, you're using trending music, boom, you're golden. You've already created a lot of desire and trust, because obviously, you know what you're doing, look at that pretty hair. Same thing with makeup or eyebrows. <laughs> Definitely. Yes. Makeup, especially. No, I know people are getting so clever with the reels, with the before and afters. I love that so much more than the simple picture of the before and after, because, you know, it's like magic when you go and you're like, what's it going to look like? I just saw a really good one this morning. Actually, I was like, okay, impressive. I need to learn how to do the snap, snap and get it to switch back and forth. Um, <laughs> okay. So Talk to us about the programs that you have, because I know there's a lot of people pivoting in business in life right now. And I know a lot of people that are not in the beauty industry are listening, that are thinking what's next for me, but they don't know how to get started. They don't know how to write copy. They don't have direction on all of that. What, what are some things that you offer um, so that people can get started and take action and have actual results? Because yay, it's fun to take action, but if you're taking 10 steps down the wrong path and you're never going to get like how you were struggling with the, with the first business. Yeah. Like if only you knew what you knew now when you first started, Jesus, right? Like you're like, hello, I wish yeah. I could do that. Um, so talk to us how we can get into some of your programs and learn the right copy and just the right way to start doing business right now. Yeah. So the most, most important part is that you get really, really clear on who you want to work with, whether that niche is profitable or not. And um, getting clear on your message, your I help statement. Now, to help you with that, I have a program called Niche Clarity Accelerator. It's super affordable. I, I, I made it 150 bucks. Why? Because that is the foundation for anyone and no one on this planet should have to struggle the way I did with my first business by not knowing who you're selling to. Now, when you're creating, like defining your niche, 
it's super important that you do market research. So this program is all about, okay, well, how to find your niche, how to do market research correctly, and how to interpret those findings. Everyone does market research and defines their avatar without ever talking to their ideal clients. So there's a, a really, like, there's word by word script. This is, these are the questions you need to ask. I don't care whether my audience listens to Beyonce or Taylor Swift. I really don't. Or what's their favorite Starbucks order? It's not important. It's not important for your business. Um, so I have that um, because that's the, the foundation. And then I also have a program, a self-study program called Addictive Caption Blueprint, which is a really no fluff, no bullshit kind of program. You spend three and a half hours, I think, going through it. You can implement it right away. And the same day, you can already write a caption that checks off all the points. It creates desire. It creates trust. It hooks people emotionally. It has an attention-grabbing headline. You know, there's so much like little nitty-gritty details to like little tweaks that you can do with your captions that instantly make them perform better. If you are able to capture attention right away and then hold it all the way through, people will actually read it. That's when your post becomes worth the effort. And it helps you write those captions in like 15, 20 minutes instead of one or two hours. So I'm a huge fan of Addictive Caption Blueprint um, because it's just so, so effective. And then if you really want to learn like all the bells and whistles, how to sell, um, for example, how to continuously sell, sell evergreen, or how to prepare a launch with your content, then I also have a coaching program called Content That Sells, which is, is very high touch. It's a group coaching program where I really go in and I audit people's content. And sometimes I'm specific down to the word. I'm like, why are you using this word? Would that not be more fitting? Um, so that's, that's my flagship program. Um, where big transformation really happens. Right now, it's only available for coaches. Um, in the future, it'll probably also be available for service providers, but um, anyone can, can really use it. Um, and Addictive Caption Blueprint is for everybody because the examples are always a service business, a product business, and a coaching business. So Awesome. So anybody who is early stage in coaching could benefit from your group coaching program and the other two, but people who are still just posting and not getting a lot of traction or results or even clicks for booking or um, if you're acquiring other kind of clients, it looks like the other two could definitely support that. And that's the thing, like getting super clear, like you're allowed to reassess where you're at. And if the clients that you're working with don't feel good and the vibe isn't right anymore, that's the thing with an industry like mine in the beginning you kind of had to say yes to everything. Like you would take clients you didn't really want to do. You would say yes to, you know, maybe hair you didn't want to be doing. And you look at your schedule, you know, you're like, I'm not inspired and motivated because you're not doing the type of clients that you want to do. And so when I would, would talk to my industry about defining their ideal client, they were like, well, I don't know. I just, I, I come do everything. Or maybe they only cut or they only color. And I'm like, but what do you want to be doing? And so don't post pictures of things you don't want to be doing. Don't, if you don't want to yeah. do that's anymore don't post your men's work if you only want to be doing balayage pretty blondes and long hair like only post the things that you want because that will attract back what you're putting out there right so um i see a lot of people posting pretty pictures but not a cap like a captivating headline and not telling them where they can book and how they can get a hold of them so uh, i think everybody should probably go through both of those um more affordable courses that you have and see if that can't help your business because investing in yourself in your business is only going to take you further. And like, I always say what well, you don't know what you don't know. And if you know what you're doing, isn't really working or converting, it's time to like step up and invest in something like Virginia has to offer. Um, I coach a lot to some of that, but it sounds like you have done your research and I'm going to look into some of those courses because I could definitely use a refresh because yeah, I can only get better if I go through other people's programs that have done the research and all of that. So, oh my God, thank you so much for all of this. Um, I'm just gonna call it advice today because you guys take it or leave it. It's there for you. The self-taught industry, the education industry of the things that you can find out, everything is figure outable and everything is there at your fingertips. So the excuses that I don't know, I can't figure it out. It's too expensive. It's this, that, whatever. That's all bullshit. Virginia had a company that was over a hundred thousand dollars in debt, figured it out, then sold everything that she had had sitting on the floor for three. Like, come on, if you can figure this shit out, right? Like we can all do it too. Don't you think? I agree. But I also want to put one thing out there. 
don't forget that everything you read from other people's businesses, everything you listen to, everything you watch on YouTube, if it's written and done and made for business, it's not meant to educate you. It is sales collateral. So keep that in mind. Learning is really, really good, but I would always rather buy a book than read five free blog, uh, blog posts. So be very, very wise with how you spend your time. Um, and if you want to learn copywriting without spending a dime, like, <laughs> then I would much rather recommend go look and be super intentional and super analytical. Like, think about every word from other coaches or other people in your niche that are highly successful and really ask yourself, why did they use this word, not that word? Why did they, why did they first talk about this thing, not that thing? So that's, that's one thing to like be really, really mindful about because if you read content from other people to learn from it, then you need to do it the right way. Okay. I love it. more <laughs> analytical of like how and why and what their results are. I love that. That's great advice. Thank you yeah. so much for that. That's really good it is. Your message is so right. Everything is figure outable. Um, I wish, I wish I had figured out copywriting and content much earlier, but you listen to this episode now, you already know. Yeah. Um, and then when you, when you, when you do your research, like ask about the why, wonder, be intentional. The same way you watch reels. Why, why are they doing reels this way? Why are they using this music? I love that. And I, I appreciate you saying that we don't have to post every day and we don't have to Hell do no. reels every day for absolutely no reason. Um, I, and I get being more strategic around like in the middle of a launch, in the middle of something that you're doing, kind of retargeting and bringing people back to your page. So they're aware that you even have something going on. That makes more sense to me than just random reels and random posting. So yeah, you don't need 200,000 followers to make a good amount of money. My first coaching client paid in full came with 92 followers. And my first five figure a month was with 200 followers. So if you have 200 followers, like you're already good to go. Like that's 200 people, right. 200. That's amazing. Okay. That's such encouragement. <laughs> so many people thinking the likes, the followers, the number matters. Um, at the end of the day, we can only take so many clients, right? So Yeah. Quality is way better than the quantity and all that other bullshit. So thank you for giving us permission not to have to run the rat race and do all that bullshit. I appreciate that so much. Yeah, no, slow down, slow yeah, down. Slow down. <laughs> so where can everybody reach you and follow you? Because you have some awesome stuff on your Instagram. Yes. So my Instagram is at Virginia on Insta. So super easy to remember. Um, I also, you can also find me on my website, um, www.contentlounge.co. So there's no M at the end dot co um and there are also two freebies one is an ebook what is about if you're tired of hearing crickets how to write content that your audience actually wants to read and then there is a free lesson from addictive caption blueprint which is all about writing scroll stopping headlines because if you can't hook people in your first two lines you've already lost you've lost against against all the cute puppy videos and cat videos and babies and memes and viral content so <laughs> Bullshit. I love it oh my god thank you so much okay so you guys go over and grab those all of those will be in the show notes um definitely gonna get the ebook definitely gonna have to do that and dive in because I want to hit the reset button because I have some things I want to pivot and change just how I'm kind of showing up so I'm so grateful that you gave us your time today for this podcast I've learned a lot and um it's it was it's a god wing from the universe saying you need to do more work, Jessica, you could always get better. So I'm going to dive into your stuff. So you'll be hearing from me soon. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jessica, for having me. Absolutely. We'll see you guys on the next one. If you love this podcast, please uh, drop in and give us a rating, a review. We would love to hear from you. And also what else are you guys dealing with in business right now? Because it will give us more uh, good, juicy stuff to talk about on future podcasts. We'll talk to you guys on the next one. Nice,